Hi there. We're going to talk about Varomites today. I've got Paul Kozak here, the Provincial Apis for the province of Ontario. And Paul's going to talk about the seasonal population dynamics of Varomites. And we're going to talk about the importance of treatment and monitoring. Uh, we've got two different methods of monitoring that we're going to be showing you. But first of all, first off, let's uh, just talk about the rural population dynamics. Paul, what's one of the most important things that you think people should know about rural mites and beehives? A few things here, Paul. Um, I would say, first of all, if you've got a, a colony of honeybees, you've got varroa mites. Um, and it's always a matter of managing those varroa mites. Those varroa mites are always on the increase. And uh, it's key that, they, that that population of varroa mites in that colony is managed. Otherwise, that colony will die. We have uh, research, actually, that Paul, yourself, you were involved in uh, from the University of Guelph Honeybee Research uh, Center that demonstrates very clearly that varroa mites will indeed kill a colony if unmanaged. Doesn't matter what people say on their blog on the internet, uh, good peer-reviewed research specific to Ontario demonstrates that quite clearly. Um, in addition to that, uh, another important thing to know is that, so as I said before, the varroa mites are always increasing. Anytime that honeybee colony is producing honeybee brood, so developing honeybees, that is allowing the varroa mites some protection. So they, a, a, large proportion, most of the varroa mites are in that brood. Um, they're protected from, from treatments at, at times, and they're also using that brood to reproduce themselves, and that's when they, they get on the increase. So as spring opens up, you get start getting brood, your varroa population immediately starts to climb. Uh, maybe you could mention a bit about uh, varroa reproduction in drone brood versus worker brood. Yes, so uh, drone brood um, has three more days than worker brood, 24 days as opposed to 21, and that makes a big difference in the life stage um, of varroa. So varroa mites actually can, um, you know, just roughly putting it, double the re reproductive capacity within drone brood. Um, the other thing is that, um, but keeping in mind that anytime you have brood again, those varroa mites are on the increase. It's also worth mentioning um, and important to understand that varroa mites, as the season progresses, their, their population not only increases, but it increases more dramatically. So it, it kind of has an exponential population right. curve and really starts to pick up steam as you get towards the end of the season. And that's where you have to be really careful that you don't have the, uh, the varroa population overtaking the honeybee colony um, because you can even get the honey, the varroa mites under control yet you still can have compromised and sick bees, especially going into winter. So you really want to be careful. Um, and that, that's where treatments come in. Right. So um, I know the, the, the focus of this is going to be on monitoring. Treatments are really the way that you are going to manage your, your rural population. There are other cultural control methods, but um, you want to, on a regular basis, suppress and push down that varroa population so it doesn't overtake the colony and cause that damage um, that University of Guelph has researched will kill, kill a colony. Monitoring comes in where um, that's really your tool for figuring out what are the levels, when should you treat, what type of treatment should you use, and was it effective? So it's really a, an important tool, monitoring, for figuring out where the varroa mites are at. Right. Uh, we see pretty big differences year to year based on the kinds of winters we have, the kinds of springs we have and so on. What times of year uh, would you suggest that people are doing this monitoring? Uh, to, because we don't really know what we have uh, one year to the next. It's quite variable. Yeah, and I, I would say that, um, you know, to quote Les Eccles, the, the lead uh, for the technology transfer program, um, you can't be keep to a calendar. So uh, varroa monitoring, even though we are promoting a, a special week on that, um, it's, it's not like St. Patrick's Day, where every day you go in and this is the day you're going to... Like you said, you get some seasons that are earlier and, and later. So if you have an earlier spring, that might mean that you want to monitor more early. Your colonies are coming out of winter earlier. And it also has implications for how quickly that varroa mite population can increase. Um, as, you know, anytime you get brood during going, um, the varroa mites are, are picking up their, their population. 
to put it very basically, I, I think that there's, you know, you got your opportunity in spring, summer, and fall to, to maunder. Sp spring as early as you can, um, that's ideal. If you are going to be putting a treatment in during spring um, before the nectar flow, which most beekeepers will have to, um, it, it doesn't hurt to actually maunder after to see if that treatment was effective. As you get towards um, you know, the end of summer, you want to check those burrow mite levels again, again at the very basic. And you also want to make sure that if you put a treatment on in fall, which again most beekeepers are, are going, to, going to probably have to do, it's a very good idea to, to maunder afterwards to figure out if that treatment was effective or not. Um, treatments will reduce the levels of mites, but you always want to make sure that they're below certain levels. I believe you guys are going to be talking about thresholds later, and that's key to understand. And the only thing worse than having bro mite levels that were not um, knocked down effectively by a treatment is not knowing about it and having the, the bees go into winter that way. Right. What happens, Paul, if uh, a colony isn't treated and the, the rural population gets out of control? Well, uh, the research from the University of Guelph has shown that that, that colony is, is much more likely to die. Um, and, you know, the science has, has demonstrated that. Um, what we're hearing about now, and that beekeepers are, are reporting experiences, and we've known about this for a while, is the whole concept of reinfestation, or some people have, have referred to it as a varroa bomb. So you could have one honeybee colony that's overrun by varroa mites, and if that, that number is so high and that colony starts to crash and it's got all those honey reserves and there are other colonies either within the yard, but if you've got a neighboring yard um, or another apiary of another beekeeper three kilometers away, those bees can easily come in, rob out those honey stores and the mites simply walk over and jump ship. And so this really gets to monitoring is, is important for the health of, you know, your individual colonies, um, you know, your individual operation, but beekeepers need to recognize that they're part of a, a community and a population, and if they're not effectively managing their varroa mites, they could be harming another person's bees, even when that beekeeper is trying to do the right thing and, um, and doing everything they need to. Um, when we talk about monitoring, we can see that there's quite a few colonies here, and I don't think anyone is, is um, expecting that you're going to monitor every colony every time you go into the yard. Um, you have to fit that into the schedule, whether you're a hobbyist or a commercial beekeeper. But let's say very, you know, very simply put, you know, three would be the bare minimum that you would want to do. That's what we do in apiary inspections um, as, as a minimum standard. But, you know, something like five in a yard of, of 30 colonies would, would probably be ideal. You are going to get variation. Um, but it's important to recognize that you, you want to get you know, a regular uh, schedule of monitoring, you want to get a, a proportion of, of the colonies you're operating with, and um, you also want to document that information. Um, if you're like me, you'll, you'll remember it really well at first, and then uh, you know, maybe two days later, you'll yeah. say, what were those levels again? Yeah, write it down for sure. Exactly. Thanks very much, Paul. Appreciate that. Thanks. Uh, your insights there. Uh, now we're going to look at two different methods of monitoring for mites. Uh, we're going to use uh, sticky paper with screen bottom board and uh, alcohol wash as well. Those are coming right up. Thank you.